What's up everybody? This is video number one in the Jig Tying Basics video series. I'm going to organize these videos with a playlist and I'm going to put a link to that playlist in the description. So this first video is going to be focusing on tools. These are just the main tools that you'll need for jig tying. I'll go over the prices, where to get them, and what they are. So to start off, you're going to need a vise. This is what holds the jig hook in place while you tie everything to it. Vices can range anywhere between $20 up to hundreds of dollars. The one I use is the Renzetti Traveler. I picked this one up for about $100 used. There's a few different vices. Uh, this one's a rotary vise, meaning it will spin freely on a bearing, so it'll just keep spinning. There's also stationary vices. They have a screw instead of a bearing, so they can only turn a certain amount of times. Rotary vices tend to be quite a bit more expensive. You'll also have to consider between getting a clamp or a tabletop vise with a base. This one has a base. It's a pretty heavy base, so it can just sit on the tabletop and not move around. If you get a clamp vise, those tend to be a bit cheaper, and you can just clamp it to your table and it'll stay in place. This one has two clamping mechanisms. The main one is just for basic clamping, then the other one is for fine tuning. If you get a non-rotary vise, it usually just has a single clamp. And this little spring here holds your materials out of the way while you're tying. So you can place your thread or your chenille in there so that they'll be out of the way. So yeah, that is the vise. Next up we have the bobbin. This is what holds the thread and keeps tension while you tie. So a bobbin can run you a couple bucks up to around $50 for a really nice one. The main difference is that the cheap ones have a set tension using these little fasteners and it just keeps constant tension on the thread. This is what I would recommend for any beginner, no need for anything fancy. The expensive ones you can just adjust the tension as you go. And then there's a couple differences between bobbins. You can get some that have a ceramic guide, some that have metal. Metal can wear over time and break your thread, so I recommend getting a ceramic. It's the cheapest way to go, very durable, and I don't have any problems with thread breaking. Alright, and now we have the whip finisher tool. This is what creates the finishing knot that secures your thread and all the materials down. So you'll notice that it spins freely. It can spin as much as you want. These will run you about $5 or less. There are different types, but this is the one I know and recommend. It's just very basic for beginners. Up next, we have the bodkin. This is, this is just a little needle that's very helpful for a few applications. Uh, it helps with dubbing, splitting thread, and then poking out the eye when you paint your jig heads. The bodkin should just be a couple bucks. I just recommend getting one of those. And then for scissors, I would get a nice pair of sharp scissors that have a, a fine or pointy tip, just so you can really get in there and cut the thread or any of your materials as close to the body as you can. The sharper the better. The scissors can run you anywhere between about $5 and $50-ish for expensive ones that are really high quality and will last longer. And up next, this is my Stonfo tool. I really like having one of these around if you're going to be tying with dubbing. This will run you about $10. It has a velcro side that can preen out the fibers of dubbing and then a comb side. It's just a really useful tool if you're going to be using dubbing, but if you're not, uh, no need for that. And if you're cheap and don't want to spend $10 on a dubbing brush, you can just use a piece of velcro. This is what I used to use. It just came off the back of my hat. You can also take it off of an old coat that you're going to get rid of, just any velcro. You can just rub it on the fibers and it'll tease them out. As far as where to get tools, I recommend flyfishfood.com. I recommend that you support your local fly shop, but Fly Fish Food is my local fly shop, so if you want high quality products shipped, this is the best place to get them in my opinion. On the website you can go through the different tools and any materials you're looking for. You can narrow it down by the type of tools. You can look at vices here. This is the vice I would go with for a beginner. If you just want something really cheap that'll hold your jigs well and last a long time, it's less than 20 bucks. And if you want a rotary vise that'll spin, uh, these are a lot more useful. Um, I would go with the Mayfly here. You can also sift through other tools. You can look at bobbins, scissors, bodkins, 
anything you're looking for you can get here for relatively cheap. So if you're looking to save the most money and just get what you absolutely need, I would suggest getting just a vise and a bobbin. So the vise you will need to hold the hook and then the bobbin you'll need to hold your thread. You can use household scissors instead of fancy fly tying scissors. They just won't be as accurate, but you can get away with it. And then you can whip finish by hand, which I'll show you how to do in another video in this series. So just look out for that. So to get started with just the basics, uh, it'll run you about 25 bucks. And that's just for the tools, doesn't count any of the materials. And if you're looking for more expensive, you can expect to spend 50 to a couple hundred bucks. Just so you're aware. So that's the basics for the tools. Uh, if, if that was helpful, please give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get around to those. I usually read every comment and respond if necessary. So keep an eye out for the rest of the playlist, or I'll show you exactly where to get everything you'll need and to tie your first jig. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing.